To do the testing, I built a box that's around the size of the typical bookshelf speaker, and I made it mostly from construction grade plywood. To make this as simple as possible, I left one side open so that I can switch out the panels I'm going to test. I also added a brace to the box, except I kept it short and it won't be touching the panel that I'm going to test. Then I cut four panels from three different types of plywood and a piece of MDF. And I thought it'd be interesting to see how much they weigh. I started with the lightest, which is actually the oak plywood. This has thin oak veneer on the faces and a poplar wood core. The next lightest is the pine plywood, and I've used that in several projects, including the listening room I built in the basement. It has five layers, and they're all pine. Next is the Balti Birch plywood, and it's quite a bit heavier. It has nine layers, and they're all hardwood birch, in fact. And finally, the heavyweight champ is the MDF. No surprise there. I'm starting with the Balti Birch plywood, and I'm running a sweep from 30 hertz right up to 2000 hertz. And I'm doing that four times for consistency and then I'll take those four measurements and average them, and that's what you're looking at here. And one thing I noticed with all of these measurements is that there's not much variation above around 270 hertz. I also picked one of those measurements and created a waterfall plot, and what that shows is how long the panel continues to ring after the tone is played. For maximum stability, I clamped the box down to my very heavy workbench, and I'll keep it from moving around. And the next panel that I'm testing is the oak veneer plywood. The accelerometer that I'm using to measure the vibrations is fastened to the center of the panel with very thin, very strong double-sided tape. And here are the results for that panel, plus the average of the four measurements. Also, here's the average from the Baltic Birch to compare it to. Overlaid, it's the orange trace. And then we can take the waterfall and we can compare it to the Baltic Birch plywood. And we can see there's a little bit more energy down low, but it doesn't hang around very long. Next up, the pine plywood, and this actually surprised me. I didn't think it would look this good, but it does. And here's the average again. And here it is compared to the Baltic birch, overlaid again, and compared also to the oak plywood. And when we look at the waterfall, that looks good next to the Baltic birch as well. Last one is the MDF, and once again, I was surprised. It actually looks a lot like the oak plywood with a very similar response. Here's the average from the oak plywood overlaid. It's the green trace this time. And looking at the waterfall and comparing it to the oak, there doesn't seem to be a huge advantage. It does look like the MDF has a slightly better decay time though. And that makes sense because MDF is supposed to have some internal damping. And then just to go a little bit further with the MDF panel still attached, I flipped the box over and measured that side in between the end and the brace. So you'll have a smaller span. And that's showing a little bit higher peaking up around 1K. And that's not really unexpected. The smaller the panel is, the higher the resonance will be. And when we look at the waterfall plot and compare it to the pine panel, because this panel is pine, the same stuff after all, you can see that it has an improvement in the decay time down low. Taking it further still again, I removed the MDF, put some stuffing inside the box, and then put the MDF panel back on and ran the four sweeps again. And that's what you see right here. Once again, I averaged that out. And here it is with the original measurement from the MDF panel without having any stuffing in the box. And you can see that the stuffing made a notable difference, especially up higher. And that carries through to the waterfall plot as well. So where does all that leave us? Well, you can take the results any way you want. You're free to look back through everything 
you know, pause the video to have a closer look, you know, examine everything and draw your own conclusions from it. But for me, it kind of confirms what I was thinking all along, and that's that it really doesn't make that much of a difference what material you use to build your speakers with, as long as it's structurally sound material. As in, it has a certain amount of stiffness and it has a certain amount of mass. It'll be perfectly fine. Because I don't think that there's anything here that I've seen in these measurements that's actually audible, especially not in a small speaker like this. The other conclusion that I drew from it is that, okay, my original understanding of this, like when I first got into the speaker building, the idea was to put damping inside the speaker, as in something to stop the box from ringing. Okay, and that can be done a couple of ways. You can use stuffing, or you can, say, put some kind of membrane onto the panels so that it, you know, it damps the panels. Some kind of rubberish membrane, okay? Damping material. However, there was a new idea that came about that said that bracing, by adding more bracing, you will drive the resonance up to the point where you won't be able to hear it. So that kind of took over, I think, in a lot of areas. And this doesn't debunk that. I can't say anything here is conclusive, but me measuring the panel, the brace panel on the other side of the box shows that it did drive the resonance up but it looks like it was at a much higher level, so therefore a better chance that you would actually hear it. So that is not a good thing. And what the stuffing or the damping actually pointed out was how that made a difference. You could actually see an improvement over the majority of the frequency range that I tested. All of the panels that I made were half inch thick. I did find a piece of three quarter inch Baltic birch and I put it on the box and that's what's on here right now. And I ran some sweeps with that and I saw a very marginal improvement over the half inch, but just marginal. It wasn't even worth me, you know, going to the trouble of capturing it to put in the video because you really wouldn't be able to see a difference. It looked almost identical to the half inch, but just slightly better, as in, you know, very slight. Okay, so I guess the takeaway from this is to not stress over those things. Don't get hung up on, oh, I have to have that specific type of material. MDF is the only thing that's worth using, although I hate working with it, because, I mean, even that um, oak plywood was almost identical to the MDF. So if you want an oak plywood exterior box and you're worried about the core material of plywood, you don't want to use that because it's unsuitable, go ahead because they test almost identical. Now as for whether you can hear the difference, okay, because there's this kind of conception of things that, okay, this is the measurements. The measurements using a microphone or accelerometer, they don't hear. You know, you can hear the difference. Well, I would dispute that right? The only thing you can do if you're into this kind of thing is build a box out of uh, all, all the materials who are, you're interested in testing and actually listen to them. But try to be objective and try to realize that so many factors affect how you hear and what you hear. You know, your mood, even your blood pressure to some extent will affect how, you know, things sound. So have to be extremely objective in your critical listening.